if I went back in time, I would teach myself the three things I'll emphasize today. Strings in Rust are commonly stored either as SDR or string. What's the difference? In programming, a string is traditionally a sequence of characters. So let's say we have the string balance. Provided each character takes up a byte, how many bytes does the whole string take up? Seven? No, eight. The length of a string can be stored by using a terminating character. Often this is a null character. A null character is a byte with all bits zero. If a string works in the described way, it's called a C string. This method has several disadvantages, including that getting the length of a string could take a lot of time, because you would need to go through the string byte by byte until reaching the null character. By the way, whenever you make a string in C, the compiler should automatically add the null character at the end. There are also Pascal strings that allow you to prefix the string with the length as a byte value. The length is stored as a byte, so the string length is limited with a maximum of 255. Well, because 8 once from binary into decimal is 255. Basically, strings are more difficult than you think they are. So now let's go back to Ross. If a string variable has a type of string with the first capital letter, this means the variable fully owns the string. Therefore, using string makes it changeable or growable. SDR, on the other hand, is a reference. So it is useful for read-only cases where you need to analyze a string or get its length. The difference is exactly like between this and this. Because the second one only gives you the pointer to the first element and the length. It's also called a slice. SDR, as you can guess, is therefore a string slice. Let's look at an example. We have a string and we know that if its length is greater than 5, it's good and otherwise it's bad. For that, we'd want to use a function that would do it for us. Well, borrowing string is used for the common case when you need to borrow without taking the full ownership of the variable. So it is really often contextual. Let's go back to what I said. SDR is really for analysis and is a view into the string. So it's much more logical to use it here. If you had to have a function that would change the variable, you would need to obviously mutably borrow string and not SDR. Let's make main create two scopes. You define a variable here, and when the scope finishes, the lifetime of the variable finishes too. Let's say we have a function that compares two strings and returns the larger one. But it needs to be sure all three are valid for the execution of the function because they can't work without each other. So it's just a way to help the compiler. Here is an example of a variable that could be invalid. We create the first string and then declare the result. Then we create a new scope and inside it create the second string and then set the declared result to the language between the two. This would work if the print statement was inside the newly created scope because both variables would be valid to be used. But if we move the print statement into the main scope, it wouldn't work because we'd need the compiler to potentially give us a reference to an invalid string, which is string 2. That's why Rust wants us to be sure both of those live at least the lifetime of A. We have a goal to make a structure with the method job. The structure has two fields, which can store either u weights or strings. To create a structure that accepts different types for its fields, you could make the type get extracted from the angle bracket generic. Then just implement the structure for different types, in our case u8 or string. Now let's talk about generics and functions. We have a range of unsigned types that we could add 3 to, all the way from u8 to u size. If we didn't have generics, we would probably create a function for each type. Using generics, let's make it much more concise. The most practical solution is to probably use the num trace crate. So here we don't fix the type, but instead make it generic. You can obviously call it whatever you want and not just t. First, let's say we need the generic type to be unsigned. And then we need to state we can add a sign a number of the same type. Now the interesting part. We need every type from u8 to u size to be valid for the three. We could obviously require the from trait for each of those. That'd work totally fine, but it all looks like a mess. Let's instead update our code to leverage numcast. And now we can call the function with any type of the a variable from u8 to u size and add three of the corresponding type to it. 